at the end of 2019, there would have been nine different trains that have run on Melbourne's tracks. But what can be said about their history? The first trains to enter service in Melbourne were these red swing door trains. Nicknamed the dog boxes or the doggies, they started service in 1887 and had a maximum speed of 83 kilometres. One drawback of the swing doors on suburban trains is that they are sometimes left unclosed. There are many stories of the doors being ripped off in narrow tunnels, which would have been a headache for workers. Finally, on Australia Day 1974, after 87 years, all of the swing doors were given a final celebration as they did their last runs around Melbourne. Similar to the swing doors, these Tate trains began service in 1910. Nicknamed the Red Rattlers in 1956 to contrast with the Blue Harris trains, these trains were named after Sir James Tate, an important railway figure in the early 20th century. In 1984, the Melbourne City Loop was about to open when they realised that the Tate trains with their wooden frames would be at risk of catching fire in the long confined spaces. Due to this, all 623 Tates were replaced by the present Comings after 74 years of amazing service on the tracks. There are very few differences between the swing doors and the Tates. But two things that I notice are that the Tates are shorter and the roofs on the carriages are more filled in compared to the swing doors. The third to enter service in 1956 were the Harris trains. Commonly nicknamed blue trains or greases, they were named after Norman Charles Harris, who was an important railway figure in the 40s and the 50s. Unfortunately, 90% of the Harris trains contained asbestos due to experiments with quieter braking, and after only 32 years were buried in an old quarry in Clayton in 1988. Next came the silver Hitachi trains, which started service in 1972. These stainless steel trains, built in Japan, were introduced to replace the swing doors and were the first to have power operated doors. In 2002, Extrapolis and Siemens trains were beginning to get introduced, both having air conditioning and push button doors. Due to this, the Hitachi soon became unpopular. The Hitachis were due to end their service in 2007, but due to there being 31 Siemens trains out of action, a few of them kept running. Finally, in 2014, after 42 years of service, the Hitachis were given a farewell tour. After most were scrapped, three lucky carriages now sit atop of the Cool Burger Joint Easies. Fifth in line were the 4D trains, which started service in 1992. Brought in from Sydney, these 4D trains were the first double-decker trains Melbourne had seen. Their 4D's name stands for Double, Deck, Development and Demonstration. Unfortunately, the 4D trains were plagued with problems, constantly being towed by Comings in their 10-year span. Only 10 years of service later, in 2002, the 4Ds were put in storage and scrapped in 2006, never to be seen again. Ah, your reliable Comming trains. They started service in 1981 and came in to replace the Tate trains. The Cummings were the first trains to have air conditioning in Melbourne and come in all shapes and colours. Here we have a green, white and blue and here we have an orange. Unfortunately, Cummings are said to be replaced by high capacity metro trains starting in late 2019. The Extrapolis 100 trains started service in 2002. Serving nine lines throughout their surface, the Extrapolises were the first Melbourne trains to have sliding doors connecting carriages and button operated doors. At first, they were built in France, and so far, there have been 200 made. Amazingly, Australia is not the only country with Extrapolises. Chile have blue and white two carriage Extrapolises that have been running since 2005. The Siemens trains began service in 2003. Just like the Extrapolis 100s, they have been run on nine different lines and there have been 72 made. In late 2006, the Siemens had huge braking issues with 14 trains overshooting platforms throughout three days. In early January 2007, Connex stopped running Siemens completely, 
leading to a big disaster of 37 peak services not run. It looked like Melbourne would never see a Siemens train again, but three weeks later, all the braking issues were resolved. With the exception of the hiccup in 2007, the Siemens have done wonderful things for Melbourne, and they don't look like they're going to slow down anytime soon. The new high-capacity metro trains are set to enter service in late 2019. The trains will feature 20% more capacity than any other train and better safety and comfort for everyone. These trains will first serve the Pakenham and Cranbourne lines and once the Metro Tunnel opens, the Sunbury line. These trains are an exciting addition to Melbourne and I can't wait to ride one myself. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the past, present and future trains of Melbourne just as much as me. Please like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.